Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and we just got through day four of PAX, the last day of PAX in Seattle, Washington, and we have a whole bunch of new Kaladesh cards to look at. So yesterday was a little bit slower being Sunday. We only looked at three cards in the video. Today we have 20 cards to look at, and as you can tell from the title screen, we got some good ones. Uh, one of the best Planeswalkers I've seen in a while, maybe Chandra torch of defiance and chandra just looks amazing of course more on that in a few moments now before we get started just a quick reminder if you check out the description below you'll see a link to my amazon affiliate store and i'm trying to compile a lot of magic products put them in some semblance of order in there which is very hard to find on amazon so if you see anything there you like you find a good deal if you buy it through one of those links a small percentage will come back to support the channel so thank you in advance for looking at that and as always thank you to the patrons on patreon who make these videos possible but even if you can't help in those ways just watching giving us a like really helps a lot too so having said that let's get into the cards for the day we're going to start off with three cards we've talked about earlier in the week so I'm not going to go into detail on these three cards since we have discussed them earlier, but I did want to show them to you because we're seeing them for the first time now in their Kaladesh versions. All three of these cards we've seen previously in promo versions with different art, but I wanted to show you the actual Kaladesh version since it's been revealed now. And we have the first one being Sahili's Artistry, which actually looks pretty awesome. Next one is Skyship Stalker, which was revealed a couple days ago with the other art. And finally, the last one is Cultivator of Blades. So now that that's out of the way, if you are interested in my opinion on those cards, just check out the playlist. Before we move on to the new stuff, just a quick reminder, if you didn't watch Friday's video, or if you're not familiar at this point with the new mechanics in Kaladesh, you may want to check out Friday's video first. The mechanics are sort of complex, and we did go into great detail on Friday to talk about them. Today, I'm just going to kind of go through the card without spending a whole lot of detail on the mechanic itself, just kind of assuming at this point we're all on the same page. Now let's jump into the new cards. And we're going to start off with a card that was a Spanish language spoiler. It's Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. This costs two white and three. It's an artifact creature construct. When this enters the battlefield, each player chooses from among the non-land permanents he or she controls. An artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker, then sacrifices the rest. It's a 4-5. This is a mythic rare. So a couple things this card tells us. First off, we saw the green gear hulk, which also cost five. So it appears that there's a cycle of these at the mythic rare level. Now, they might not put all five in this set. They could do three in the set and two in Ether Revolt. That's very possible, so they're not taking up five Mythic slots with the one cycle, uh, but remains to be seen. We'll see what they decide to do with that. But regardless, this is a really good card. I mean, first off, obviously limited bomb, okay? <laughs> Even if I was paying five for a four or five Vigilance creature, I'd be pretty happy and limited. I would draft that and go about my business and be uh, just fine with it. <laughs> um, but I'm getting much more than that. I'm getting basically the Cataclysm effect tied into it, uh, this time including Planeswalkers in the list. This is incredibly powerful if you're playing a slower, maybe a taller deck with trample creatures as opposed to the wide deck with a lot of servo tokens or something like that. So basically your opponent's going to have a fast start, they're going to play a lot of small creatures, get the servo tokens going, maybe some vehicles. You just land this on the table on turn five or six and you clear all that nonsense out and you got yourself a nice four or five vigilance card that can attack in and also block very well uh, this is a bomb <laughs> right so is it good enough for standard play i think so maybe it's out of the sideboard but i think it's good i mean we've seen in standard especially recently a lot of go wide decks you've had the humans decks and stuff like that and tokens decks so this does combat that strategy pretty well and especially in standard you can abuse the cataclysm a little more by trying to have a planeswalker out for example like maybe a Gideon on turn four or something like that and perhaps even an enchantment and maybe creature wise you have another artifact creature for example and you'll get tons of value if that board state happens to present itself right as for modern I could see trying to play this out of the sideboard in some matchups as well I mean it remains to be seen if it quite gets there but it's a strong card and it really deals with token strategies very effectively Next, we have a card that was a Japanese language spoiler. Loosely translated, we think it's Trinket Master Crafter. It's a white and two dwarf artificer. Servo and Thopter creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Pay white and three, create a one, one colorless servo artifact creature token. This one's a three, two, it's a rare. 
So first off, another really good dwarf that plays well with artifacts, so that's actually pretty exciting, especially for commander. The more of these type of cards that play well in the dwarf slash vehicle category that there are, that just makes that archetype like better for the commander. So I think that's actually pretty awesome. As far as limited goes, I think this is a great card. I mean, a little fragile at two toughness, but if you get yourself a whole bunch of tokens on the board, if that's your strategy, then you play this. And even if it only lives one turn, you might be able to get in for some serious damage for that turn. And if it can't be destroyed, then you're probably going on to win the game at some point, right? <laughs> so that's actually kind of awesome. I like the fact that it also can create tokens. So again, as long as you have enough mana, you put this down, even if it's going to be destroyed, maybe at least get a token out of it or something like that. So I think there's some value to be had there. Definitely a good card in limited. I wouldn't mind playing it at all as far as standard goes i think it's a little too early to guess if it's going to be good there we're just going to have to see how servos and thopters iron out as we see the rest of the set i mean so far they're off to a great start with fabricate and stuff if there's enough really good standard playable cards that are good on their own that have fabricate or make thopters then this is just a nice complement to those cards and it could get there but we really have to see that and we still have a lot of cards to see still Next we have Wisp Weaver Angel. This costs two white and four, it's an angel. Four, four flyer. When this enters the battlefield, you may exile another target creature you control then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. And this is uncommon. So first off, I'm gonna say limited. This is actually really good, I think. I think we're so used to seeing angels for five that are four, four with more abilities than this even on them but you do have to remember those are usually rare or mythic rare angels it's just kind of how it is so paying six for this unlimited actually feels fine to me and i really like the blink effect in this set i mean you have fabricate you have energy cards with they give you energy when they enter the battlefield there's a lot of good enter the battlefield effects in this set that this could potentially abuse pretty well in a limited situation so i like it a lot now, when you go much past limited and you start talking about like modern or even commander, unfortunately, this is competing with Restoration Angel, so it doesn't feel quite as good in those areas. And unfortunately, I think for standard, it's a little overcosted for what it's doing here. You start thinking about five, six mana in standard, and there's some really crazy powerful things you can do in white right now, and this really can't compete with them. Uh, but again, fine card for limited. Metallurgic summonings and this is two blue and three and this is a mythic rare it's an enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell create an xx colorless construct artifact creature token where x is that spells converted mana cost pay two blue and three and exile this return all instant and sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand activate this ability only if you control six or more artifacts so this is a big kind of splashy sweeping effect you do have to notice a couple things though first off the tokens don't have any sort of evasion so they could still be good tokens i mean if you abuse this say maybe in commander with like a force of will or something like that there's some value to be had there don't get me wrong i think that's where this card will really shine i think is commander because commander is a little bit of a slower pace when it, just because it's a multiplayer game you're able to get away with some things that you can't get away with in a one-on-one -on -one situation I think the drawback of this card for, say, standard is it costs five, and there's no guarantee that you're going to get any sort of value out of it the turn you play it. You're almost taking a turn off, and I think sometimes that's just a little too slow. And I think the level of variance for this card is going to be a little too great. Now, granted, there's a good chance you have an instant sorcery in your hand if you build your deck around it. But if you don't, for some reason, say top deck this thing, it's really doing nothing for you. Maybe next turn you'll have the five mana to return stuff from your graveyard to your hand. But again, that's contingent on having the mana and also having stuff in your graveyard, right? So there's just a lot of things that have to line up right for this to happen, which makes it probably a little too inconsistent for standard. But I do think it is a fantastic commander card. And I also feel that this could do work in the right limited deck. This is one of those cards you probably draft around, though. Now, we don't know like what the is it for example spells deck will look like in Kaladesh or if it even exists uh, but there's a good chance just from what we've seen so far that there's enough pieces of that style of deck that you could build a good limited deck around this but again it's not going to show up that often being a mythic but when it's there and you can put the deck together it'll be fine but if you don't have enough targets instant sorcery wise then it's not going to be super great for you and it'll probably just be in your sideboard. Next, we have a card that comes to us in two forms. We have the game day promo version as well as the Kaladesh version, and it's Essence Extraction. 
Two black and one. It's an instant, uncommon. Deals three damage to target creature, and you gain three life. I think this is a very good limited card. It's at instant speed. That's always a huge bonus. It deals with small threats. However, there's a lot of really good small threats in this set. Actually, we're going to see a few more as we keep going today. The gain life sometimes will be kind of incidental. Uh, but if you're up against a hyper-aggressive deck, like maybe the Boros deck, it could matter in some matchups, so it's kind of nice to have, not necessarily always going to play a role, but a nice to have regardless. I uh, Could this see some standard play? I mean, maybe out of some sideboards, there is some better removal out there. This set actually has a fair amount of removal so far at the uncommon level, and some of it is actually quite interesting and plays well with some of the mechanics like energy and whatnot, where this doesn't do that. Uh, so maybe, maybe not, but at the very least, it'll be a good card for you in Limited. Be happy to draft these at uncommon all day long next we have fortuitous fine one black and two it's a sorcery common choose one or both return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand and or return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand i actually like this a lot it is at sorcery speed but i'm only paying three for it so i feel okay with that cost i feel like that's economical enough as long as i have two targets and i think you're going to have a lot of opportunities to have two targets with this in limited now you'll have vehicles that could be going to the graveyard you'll have creatures that be going to the graveyard you have other artifacts that will be going so i do think it will be relatively easy for you to get two targets and if you get two targets i think the value here is amazing this allows you also to potentially trade with some of your artifact creatures and then get them back which can be very powerful if you have a couple of these even in your deck and you do that a couple times you can really start to take over the board state so really good limited card i do like this one a lot next we have morbid curiosity two black and one it's a sorcery uncommon as an additional cost to cast this sacrifice an artifact or creature draw cards equal to the converted mana cost of the sacrifice permanent this card feels really good to me so a couple things first off it is a sorcery not an instant so you can't kind of hang back and wait for one of your creatures or artifacts to be destroyed and then just go ahead and use this at the last minute uh, you do have to kind of plan this out a little bit and kind of deal with the fact that you're going to have to make a small sacrifice your board state to get the card draw but when this works it's going to feel really really good uh, they were doing a presentation at pax today where they had some spell slinging going on on stage it was actually kind of fun lsv actually played with this card i think he had two or three copies that he played out of his deck and he was drawing cards cr like crazy early in the game so <laughs> if that's any indication of how good this card is going to be i think this one's a real deal fantastic card and limited i think and I do think it will see some standard play as well. It feels really strong when you see it in action, especially with like some of the Emerge creatures that you can cheat out a little bit earlier. And then if they've outlived their usefulness, you can go ahead and draw a ton of cards off them. So that might be something to watch for in the future. All right, here's the big card of the day. Chandra Torch of Defiance. Two red and two. This is a Planeswalker, of course, Mythic Rare for loyalty. Plus one, exile the top card of your library. You may cast that card. If you don't, Chandra Torture Defiance deals two damage to each opponent. Plus one, add two red to your mana pool. Minus three, Chandra Torture Defiance deals four damage to target creature. Minus seven, you get an emblem with, whenever you cast a spell, this emblem deals five damage to target creature or player. <laughs> All right, where do we begin with this one? Okay, first off, she has four abilities. On the front side of the card, we haven't seen that since Jace the Mind Sculptor. Now, Jace is crazy good and broken for a couple of reasons. One is his abilities are crazy good and broken. <laughs> but the other one is he does give you a whole lot of versatility with three different abilities plus his ultimate. Chandra, at the very least, gives you that versatility. Now, I think this card's the real deal. I'm looking at this and I see a forecasting cost Chandra that's giving me tons of options. And the first one is doing what every burn deck wants to do or hyper aggressive red deck wants to do. And that's draw cards basically and get a chance to cast these extra cards. And you know what? If you miss and you get something you can't play, a land for example, because you have to cast the card, then it does two damage to all your opponents. So all opponents, that's great for commander. Also great in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Now, if I'm playing the big red deck, then maybe I'm more interested in the adding the two mana to my mana pool to help me get into the bigger things like Inferno, Titan, stuff like that. So she's doing everything a red mage wants to do. 
that's awesome. <laughs> she can defend herself as well with the minus three ability, take out a big creature that could be looming around, good in a pinch if you need to do that. But also if you're playing a lot of burn, that could help support her as well. And really she's not super far off the ultimate. I mean, you play this on turn four, she goes up to five. If you can keep her alive for a couple turns, you can ultimate her and that feels like it should be game over. 99.9% .9 of the time, right? So I think this is the challenger I've been waiting for. I said earlier in the week, I was really looking forward to this card because the first few challengers weren't good. <laughs> uh, the last couple have been very good. I've actually liked them quite a bit. This one, though, feels like the great Chandra that we've been waiting for. I think this card is going to be amazing. So, yes, I think this is playable wherever you're going to see red decks going forward. I think this is legacy playable because once she gets on the board in a more aggressive burn style deck, you got to remember a lot of legacy decks don't have a lot of creatures to attack in with anyway. They're doing different things other than maybe... Things like Zoo and Dredge, of course, are a little different, but there's a lot of combo decks out there and stuff like that. She's going to be great against them because she can just get out there. You can protect her with the burn, tick her up, and then just close out the game. I think she's definitely modern playable. I think she will see a lot of standard play. I think Red's coming back into its prominence now. It didn't seem to get a lot of help from the Shadows Over Innistrad block compared to what Red was doing in recent history but that could be because they knew some big cards were coming in this set and they didn't want to oversaturate us with a lot of crazy stuff so this card looks like it's going to work very well in standard with some of the new red threats that we've seen we've seen some other really good haste creatures and stuff and red does seem to play really well with vehicles as well so that could be interesting and yes this is great in commander obviously this is great in cubes uh I think she's the real deal. I'm excited. I think we got that Chandra that's going to be the Chandra for many years to come. Very exciting card. Next we have Harness Lightning. One red and one. It's an instant uncommon. Choose target creature. You get three energy counters. Then you may pay any amount of energy. Harness Lightning deals that much damage to that creature. Okay, a couple things. First off, this doesn't go to your opponent, which is probably a good thing, because I think that would be broken in this set. It just feels like there's a lot of ways to get energy, like very cheaply early in the game, and you could just hit your opponent for probably a ton of points if it worked that way uh, instead it hits a creature but i still think that's still very good it's an instant which is great and even if i don't have any other energy counters i'm able to take this and if i need to do three damage to a creature for two at instant speed that feels really good to me and if i don't need to do three maybe it's only one toughness creature that i want to deal with i can bank the other two energy counters and keep them for later that's kind of awesome. So I really like the versatility again. And like I said, I think there's going to be a lot of times where you're just going to have a ton of energy early in the game. You'll probably be able to take out a larger creature or maybe a vehicle once it's activated, something like that. It could be quite good. So again, I like this one a lot. Fantastic and limited. This will see some standard play as well. Next card is kind of a spoiler if you haven't read the story update on the Magic website today, but it's PNLR, so yes, she is alive. I won't say anything else. Uh, one red and two, legendary creature, human artificer, rare, 2-2. Two, two. When this enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. A red and one, target artifact creature gets plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. One, sacrifice an artifact, target creature can't block this turn. So a couple things. First off, I like the fact that she makes the Thopter token kind of a callback to her Magic Origins card with her husband where they made the two tokens when they came into play. This time it's just her making one token. Uh, the pump ability is okay. I mean, not super exciting, but there's times you'll use it. Uh, I'm really excited about her third ability though. The fact that you can sacrifice maybe like a servo token or something like that and make it so your opponent's best creature can't block. If you have a couple servo tokens, maybe you make their best two or three creatures can't block and it could help you even potentially put away a game in the right circumstance. Now her downside of course is she's very fragile at 2-2. Two, two. There's a lot of ways to get rid of her, but I think she could shine if you just hold her back a little bit for a time where she can do the most damage in one turn and that way you just Put her down, sacrifice a few tokens, get in there for some crazy damage, maybe even put the game away if you're lucky. And if your opponent deals with her, they deal with her, you still got the value out of the card. And if they can't deal with her, good chance you may be winning that game. So she's real good and limited. I, hard to say right now how good she will be in Construct as far as standard. Like I said, I think the two toughness is going to be a big roadblock to overcome. It's just going to come down to how important 
the Thopter token as well as the abilities on this card are going to be to the metagame. She could get there perhaps, but I do think it might be tough with all the cheaper removal that's out there right now. All right, next we have Arborback Stomper. Two green and three. This is a beast, trample, uncommon. And when this enters the battlefield, you gain five life. It's a five four. This feels like a fixed Thrag Tusk to me, but it's still a really good limited card. And I think it's also a very good standard card. I think this will see standard play. I mean, getting a five four with trample for five feels really economical. And five life is a fair chunk of life. Like it's not one, two, three life. But once you start talking like five life, that's a quarter of your life total. Like that's kind of a big deal. And we saw how powerful that kind of swing could be with Thrag Tusk. Now, yes, this card isn't quite as good as Thrag Tusk, so it's not gonna see modern play in a world that has that card available to it. <laughs> but at the same time, I do think it's good enough for standard and it's gonna be a bomb and limited. And again, notice it's an uncommon, another really good limited card at the uncommon slot. There seems to be a lot of that. Armorcraft Judge, a green and three, Elf Artificer. This one's uncommon. 3-3. Three, three. When this enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So obviously this will work really well with Fabricate. And in Limited, if you have a fair amount of Fabricate cards, this is a good card to run. I mean, it's got like Hill Giant stats anyway. So worst case scenario, you play it and it's a 3-3 three, three for four. That's not the worst thing in Limited. It's definitely a, a playable body and can do some damage. Uh, outside of Limited, it's interesting because you feel like this might be an okay standard card especially if there's like a fabricate deck or a deck that's just giving a lot of counters in even other ways but at the same time i almost feel like if i have counters on a whole bunch of creatures i'm kind of winning the game anyway like sure drawing more cards is awesome <laughs> but would i rather just have something else to put more pressure on my opponent faster uh, than this i don't know it feels like it's it's competing with a lot of stuff in the four slot and it does feel a little bit like a win more for me so i'm not sure again it's a little early to tell i mean i would want to see the rest of the set to kind of see how this falls in place especially with the other fabricate cards and stuff uh, but at the very least i think it's a good limited card Next we have a Spanish language card, and it's Garapor Guide. A green and two, Elf Scout, and if you pay a green and two, target creature you control can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn. It's a three, two. And this is another uncommon. This is decent and limited. I mean, a three, two for three, I'm fine with that. Even just a vanilla three, two for three, I definitely consider playing it in a lot of situations. But on top of that, you get the ability to stop maybe your largest creature from being chump blocked by something small, and you hopefully will be able to get some more damage across. So I think the upside's strong enough, and like I said, I'm happy with the body for three anyway. Uh, so it's a really fine limited card. Next we have Larger Than Life, one green and one. This is a sorcery, it's a common. Target creature gets plus four, plus four, and gains trample until end of turn. This is kind of funny. They showed this card a few days ago at PAX. I didn't report on it because they uh, hid the bottom part of the card. They didn't show the whole thing. So I wasn't sure if there was actually more rules text on there or not. Uh, but the reason they did that was because it does reveal another spoiler from the story today, and that is Tezzeret is also going to be on Kaladesh. Again, I won't say any more than that if you haven't read the story. Uh, but they did reveal this card today in its entirety and it's a good limited card again I mean it's not an instance so it's not a combat trick but this is not really meant to be defensive this is meant to be super offensive you want to put this on your biggest creature give it trample and plus four plus four just get in there for some damage now this is one of those cards you probably don't want three or four of in your deck because there's situations where this might be a dead card especially if you're behind you can't really do a whole lot with this because again it's not a combat trick but if you're ahead in the game then this can hopefully close it out for you so one or two of these in a limited build can be probably quite good Next we have Long Tusk Cub, a green and one. This is a cat, two, two, another uncommon. Whenever this deals combat damage to a player, you get two energy counters. Pay two energy, put a plus one, plus one counter on Long Tusk Cub. Uh, this feels super good to me. A bear with upside, and this is some serious upside. I mean, this thing's a two, two for two, wonderful. But then when it does do combat damage, you get two energy counters. And on top of that, if you can pay two energy counters, it gets a permanent plus one, plus one counter. And again, it does feel like there's a lot of ways to get energy early on. So I'm playing this thing for two. Perhaps right away I can maybe make it a three, three, or even a four, four in some situations. That feels crazy to me, right? So I think this is 
amazing. <laughs> and just the fact that once you start making it bigger, especially early in the game, you attack in, your opponent then is either going to have to chump block or give you more energy that you can either use for other things or just use to make this bigger again. Granted, it doesn't have evasion, but there's a certain point where I don't care because it's going to be able to get so big so quick in the right build, right? Uh, so this is phenomenal. Uh, this feels perhaps first pickable in draft. This is an incredible limited card. I even think this could see some standard play. This potentially could see play in other formats as well. The big question I have before I'd say that this is something I want in my like Legacy Zoo deck is just how easy is it going to be to get energy in those type of formats? Are there cards that I'll feel okay playing in a Legacy or even a Modern that are powerful enough if there are, then this card could fit into those builds, but we just don't know that yet. So I'm going to kind of hold off judgment on that until we see the rest of the set. Then you'll be able to see if this can hang when things like Wild the Coddle, for example, right? But having said that, yeah, this is going to definitely see standard play. And this is just awesome, crazy limited bomb too, I think. Next we have another really strong beater, a Voltaic Brawler, a green and red. 3-2. When this enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. When this attacks, you may pay energy. If you do, it gets plus one, plus one. It gains trample until end of turn. So you can't kind of do it as a combat trick in the middle of combat. You have to do it when it attacks, but still, you're giving it trample, and even if you just pump one energy into it, you get a 4-3 trampler for two. <laughs> even a 3-2 for two is great, <laughs> right? Uh, so this, again, feels really pushed to me. Great Gruel beatdown card. Again, potentially standard playable if there's a Gruel deck out there. I guess we'll have to see uh, how the metagame turns uh, once this set comes out. Uh, but it's the power levels there, if nothing else. Fantastic limited card, though. Really like this one a lot. I think this could really shine. Again, I feel like energy is just not too too hard to get in a lot of situations the real trick especially in limited i think is just going to be balancing your deck as to how many cards you have that are just energy creation cards versus cards like this that are the true payoff cards right and getting that balance right if you can get that balance right i think you have a really strong deck on your hands with cards like this Next we have a vehicle, it's a Bowmap Bizarre Barge. Cost 4, Artifact Vehicle, Uncommon, 5-5. Five, five. When this enters the battlefield, draw a card, and has Crew 3. Now Crew 3, of course, being kind of the drawback, if you will. It's a little bit higher than some of the other cards we've seen. But, you know, it doesn't feel impossible to me. Granted, on turn 4, maybe I don't have 3 power of creatures on the board at that point, depending on how the game's going. But hopefully by turn 5 or 6, I do. And then I can start turning this thing on and just crashing in there with a 5-5 five, five. that seems pretty good but what i like the most about this is it draws you a card when you play it so it does replace itself and if there are more flicker effects in the set we saw the angel earlier then again this is another target for those type of shenanigans i feel like there'll be more of that maybe some of the common level and stuff so that's kind of cool so the card itself i feel is very strong i think it's a great limited pick i'd be very happy with it in limited i think it would be fine there especially with some fabricate make sure i have some tokens that i know of be able to turn the thing on most of the time right i think it'll be great there as far as standard goes it's hard to say how good vehicles will be in standard at this point just because it's a little too early my guess is they will be standard playable for the most part just because a new unique mechanic like this i feel like wizards will push it so it gets some spotlight of the pro tour and stuff so potentially this card could be one of those that sees play uh, but right now at the very least definitely a good limited card Next we have Demolition Stomper. Cost six, it's a vehicle, 10-7. Can be blocked by creatures with power two or less and it has crew of five. So this costs a little more and of course the crew five is a little harder to pull off. But once you can pull this off, this thing's pretty formidable. I mean, 10-7, the fact that you can't chump block it with like your 1-1 servo tokens or thopters, that's actually kind of awesome. So if this is coming in, your opponent's probably gonna try to get rid of it by blocking it with two or three creatures. And if that's what happens, you know what? That's some card advantage that I'm happy with, right? So I don't know, in standard, I think it might be a tad expensive for what it's trying to do to get there, but I think this is a good limited card. I'd be very, very happy to run one of these in my limited deck at the sixth spot. Inventor's Goggles. This one costs one, it's an artifact equipment, common. A creature gets plus one, plus two. The equip cost is two. And whenever an artificer enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Inventor's Goggles to it. So this is a way to kind of buff some of these artificers. 
one of the best examples maybe is a card we just saw with PNLR. If I have this on the battlefield and I play Pia, now all of a sudden she's a 3-4. She's a lot harder to get rid of, and that's where this card kind of shines. So if you have situations like that. So if you have some artificers that are important to you that you would like to keep around, running one or maybe two of these in a limited deck will make sense i think if you don't have that going on in your deck though it's probably not worth running this i mean equipment that gives something plus one plus two randomly it's cheap enough it only costs one and two to equip that's actually not that bad but i feel like there's probably other things you could be doing there's some pretty strong cards in the set even like in the low curve like the two drops that I feel like this might not always make your 23, but it's definitely not unplayable in those situations. But like I said, it gets better if you have some artificers where it makes sense to use this. All right, our last card of the day, it's a multi-form wonder. Costs five, artifact creature construct, it's a rare 3-3. And when this enters the battlefield, you get three energy counters. You can pay one and it will gain your choice of flying, vigilance, or lifelink till end of turn, or you can pay one and give it plus two, minus two, or minus two, plus two till end of turn. So this is just a super versatile card as long as you have the energy to back it up. Now it comes into play with three energy. If I don't have a lot of ways to get energy in my deck for some reason, this doesn't feel quite as good. Paying five and maybe I can use the abilities a couple times, and that's okay. But what I really want to do is just be able to have enough energy to make this thing a threat turn after turn. And as long as I have the cards that allow me to do that, this becomes a very, very good limited card. So, okay, it's a 3-3 three, three for 5. That doesn't feel super good. But the 3 energy, I think there's a lot you can do with that. And, of course, this card gives you a lot of good things to do with it. Just giving this thing, say, flying lifelink, and if your opponent doesn't have a blocker in the air, plus 2, minus 2, getting in there for 5 damage, gaining 5 life. That feels pretty good, right? So uh, this will make a lot of limited builds. It's a rare. You're not going to see it all the time. But as long as you have some cheap energy cards to keep filling that pool to get more value out of this, this will be a really good pick for you. As far as standard goes, I'm not so sure at this point just because, again, it's a little too early to say how many relevant energy cards are going to be floating around. I feel like there'll be a lot, so maybe this card will be okay, uh, but it's just a little too early to make that call until we see more of the set, I think. Uh, but having said that... Those are all the cards from PAX. <laughs> so we had four days of PAX. They were amazing. And this actually puts us smack dab in the beginning of the first official week of spoilers. Today actually was the first official day of spoilers leading up to the full set reveal week from Friday. So every day this week, we're gonna get more cards. And every day I'll make sure that we compile those cards, give you some quick analysis and put these videos out for you. Tomorrow we should be seeing some more cards in the late morning, early afternoon. So again, I'll compile those and get the information to you in a week from Friday when we get the full set revealed. We'll begin our full set review as we always do. So until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality content for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't yet had a chance to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.